Hey there, I'm going to uh, demonstrate hooking up a hexapod to the auto position control and demonstrate some of the benefits of using um, a movement panel and how a movement panel works in ARC. So I'm going to use this hexapod. It's pretty big. It's about uh, 50 centimeters um, wide and it's all 3D printed and inside here is um, you can see the uh, little circuit board and that circuit board, it's attached on top of the EZB. That actually has a bunch of voltage regulators on it. There's one regulator per, um, per servo so that they all get 5 volts because these are 5 volt servos. They don't like running off the LiPo's 7.4 volts. So let me just turn it on. So I'll connect to its Wi-Fi. And we'll connect to the robot. There we go. So we'll add an auto position control. Now we're going to add um, the auto position control that is inside of the movement panels tab because this is going to be a movement panel, auto position. You'll notice it has joystick controls on it and a speed control as well. So this will allow us to be able to control the movements of the different frames and also the speed. So what we'll first want to do is uh, edit this control and we'll select stand. We're going to add servos for every servo that this uh, robot has. So we'll click the add servo button and we're going to move it into a position because each servo is going to move into a position that's going to make it look like the actual robot itself. So we'll select the first servo and then we'll add the next servo which will come off of it. And we'll do this for all of them. There we go. And then what we'll do is we'll turn off the port edit mode. So we can just see the degrees. Now we're in a stand position. So by default, all the servos are going to be 90. Um, if your robot's put together and of course, like maybe the center is not 90, maybe it's 100. So you want to configure um, the servos to be centered so it's in a standing position. And then what we'll do is we'll add a new frame. And we'll call this one forward one. And we'll start moving the servos into the position for walking forward. So we'll um, move them and then we'll lift this one up. Move another one and move it up. So we're gonna do this for each one and then what we'll do is we'll, once we, uh, we're done with this frame, then we can click add a new frame and it'll be based off this existing frame and then we'll move the servos into different positions. And a quick shortcut, if you right click inside of the window, you can actually type in the number, which makes it a little bit quicker to be able to create these different frames. So once you have the frames for walking done, you'll be able to transition between them. And of course, we're going to do that with, with each servo so they all move and make it walk. And then because this is a forward, what we'll do is we'll go into the action tab and we'll go into forward and then we'll add in our forward one, forward two into the list and there might be five or six so I'm going to keep adding some more here and then I'll skip over after creating a bunch and show you and you want to make sure this is set for action repeats because this particular action forward action is going to keep repeating this order over and over again and if you want you can double click on them and you can change the speeds as well as the modifiers which allows the speed to be controlled so what we've done right now is we have forward set up and we'll also set up stop so stop is just going to be in the stand position um, it'll transition itself automatically from whatever position the servos are in into stand 
automatically for you, which is really convenient. So if I were to now just use the forward button, that's the little thing we just made. And then when I push stop, it goes in the stop position. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make a couple frames in here and then we'll, uh, I'll show you how we can use the auto position as a movement panel to use other controls like the, um, the camera control and speech recognition and things like that. Because once this is configured to bind to the movement commands like forward, left, right, etc., as well as the speed, um, you'll be able to control all of that from other skills inside of your project. All right, so I have created a bunch of auto position frames, um, and I also imported some from some existing projects that I had. So for example, here's walk, one, two, three, and four. And then when it repeats, back to one, so it's walking. <laughs> and if we take a look at the, uh, the actions here, you'll see that I have um, an action here called forward and forward is a pre-built action you can't rename it you can't remove it because it's a um, it's an it's a movement action so you can't do anything with it even if you try to delete it, it'll say you can't so as you can see I have my walk one walk two walk three and then I also have um, my stop I have my turning right my turning left and of course I have my reverse. So with all of those different um, frames signed to those actions, I can now use this joystick and the robot will start walking. And I can use the speed control here to slow it right down. And I can turn the robot. And speed it up. There we go. And you can see the different frames that are running here when I run a different actions. Now I have a bunch of other ones here. For example, I have something called attack. And I have um, something called a curl dance. And a circle dance. And let's see what else we have here that's kind of fun. Straffing right. I have an action here called waves. When I click on wave, it'll say hello. <laughs> and so what we can do here is um, I can also add in other controls that can take advantage of the movement panels. So all these different skills that we have here, for example, in audio, I have speech recognition. And under speech recognition, if we were to edit that, you'll see here we have things like robot move forward, robot reverse, stop. These are pre-built already. And if you take a look at the code, all it's doing is it's actually saying movement.forward. So if we were to type in movement and then the dot, and you have all the different directions, including controlling speed, all these different things. So there's up and take off and stuff for drones as well, but those are not relevant to what we're going to be doing. So just by having all of these different speech recognition command set, I can now talk to the robot and it'll execute those. So now I'm going to be able to say those commands into the speech recognition control and control the robot. Robot, move forward. Robot, stop. And then I can control it again by the joystick commands here. There we go. Now this robot does have a camera on it, so I can demonstrate how the camera skill will also take control of it. So what we'll do is we'll connect to the camera. And what we'll do is we are going to uh, first make sure the robot can see a color. So I'm going to turn the robot around. For fun here, I have a little Tickle Me Elmo. <laughs> so I'll put that in front of the robot. And we're going to teach the robot this particular color. So what I can do is I can go into the multicolor tab and I can edit this color that's default there. We can add as many colors as you want. And we're just going to fine tune to be able to only see the color that we care about, which is the Tickle Me Elmo. And then we're gonna get rid of anything that's too bright. There we go, so now it can see that particular 
object. If we go back into multicolor tracking here and turn that on, you'll see that it's, it's recognizing the object. So if I take this away from the robot so it can't see it, and I go into uh, the camera skill settings, I can turn on what's called movement tracking and I can specify if the robot's going to move different directions and what speed it's going to be able to move at. So I'm going to turn off forward so it doesn't try to chase the robot. I'm just going to go left and right. So now when I place the object in front of the robot and it detects it, I can make it go left or I can make it go right. And if we were to go back inside of the camera control in the skill settings, we can turn forward movement on now and we make the robot actually chase the object, which is also kind of fun. <laughs> so that's an example of how um, different skills now can take advantage of what's called a movement panel. And this particular movement panel, the auto positioner, um, what it does is it has a bunch of algorithms to be able to calculate how to move the servos into different positions based upon what it is that you're trying to get it to do. So they'll transition. So for example, as the robot's walking, as you can see here, if I were to tell it to wave now and push the execute on wave, watch how it transitions into the wave. See the servos didn't have to jerk to get to it, or if I'm walking, and then I transition into swim. It doesn't matter what position it's currently into, it's gonna move back into that frame that it's specified. And if I were to make the robot walk backwards, and when I push the stop button, watch how it transitions right into stop. So I'm just gonna do it right when it's midway, like that, you see, and it transitions itself. So it's taking control of all the servos so they don't jerk into any uh, specific positions that would be done otherwise with a bunch of code. Um, other skills that take advantage of using uh, movement panels, well, there's tons. So you can hook up joysticks, or Wii controllers, or you can, um, even add under navigation you can add a movement joystick so we'll install this movement joystick here and here you can see I can control it from an analog joystick so I have control over the speed now so you'll notice when you look at the at the skill at the auto position and you see the speed here you can see in the movement joystick when I start controlling it you can see how the speed is actually changing up and down based upon what it is I'm, how much speed I'm giving it by the joystick. And also what's kind of neat is if you wanted to remote control this robot, say, from a, uh, another computer anywhere on the internet, you can do it a few different ways. Um, you can go into the, I think it's under general, and there's HTTP servers as well. So you can add the HTTP server and connect to it over the internet and control it. And you can also see the camera. And lastly, of course, you have under machine learning, you have Exosphere. So in Exosphere, you can add this, this skill and when you add it, it allows you to connect it so you can do telepresence with it, or you can remote control it, or you can teach it using machine learning um, how to perform different tasks. So you can configure the skill here, give it some information about your robot, test out to make sure the different um, speeds are working, and you can also lock it down so only specific users have access to it, and you can turn on audio streaming, etc. So there's tutorials on how to use the uh, exosphere skill. Of course, to get access to any of these manuals, there's a little question mark. Push the question mark and it'll bring up the manual page and you can read how to use it. 
So this is the manual page for Exosphere. So that's one of the advantages of using the auto positioner is the fact that you don't have to write all the code for all the different positions. This will work for hexapods. It'll work for um, walking humanoid robots, anything that requires a particular gate where you have multiple joints and the servos are powering those joints to be able to make it move. If you didn't have a robot with a bunch of servos like this, there's different types of movement panels. You'll find under the movement panel category here, things like H bridges and, um, continuous rotation servos, and also various different types of robots as well. So there you have it. That's why um, we always push the auto position to be used on gate style robots.